Hello everyone, it's Shel C from Paper Actio Studio and today I'm sharing with you the mixed media collage canvas I made inspired by our mixed media moods mood board. This is a Facebook group and you can join if you want to just go over to Facebook and look for our mixed media moods group and ask to join. This is a group um, put on by mixed media Jen and DD Catron or Catron however you say it um, and they put up a mood board each month and you can use it to be inspired to do whatever you want and then they they each make a video each month just to, to show what they were inspired to do by the media board the make the <laughs> the mood board <laughs> so if you if you want to go join them but anyway you can see the mood board right there and it's got um, it's got this aquament color very predominant um, very pretty color and then I was inspired by the little bike that's up in the right hand corner um, I don't know I looked at that and I said wow I have this fantasy that someday I'm gonna own a, a bike like that and I'm gonna just I'm gonna ride down to the grocery store and I'm gonna get a baguette and some flowers and maybe some uh, you know cheese and wine and I'm gonna put it in the basket and I'm gonna drive home and it's just gonna be so peaceful and I don't know <laughs> it's never gonna happen first of all I don't care what they say about it's like riding a bike if I got on a bike at this point I'm pretty darn sure that I would fall over and break my butt that's what's gonna happen if I get on a bike also I don't own a cute little bike like this I'm not even sure how you get a bike like this it's very vintage but my idea was to use the bike and the color and have those things be the inspiration. Um, the color and the mood board seemed very spring-like, so I wanted to have flowers in the basket. I wanted to have flowers on my canvas. And I just I haven't made a canvas for a while, so I thought it would be fun to do that. So the first thing I'm doing is I am drawing <laughs> with as you can see as I'm fidgeting much difficulty <laughs> I'm trying to draw this bike onto the deli paper because I'm going to paper paint it with little teeny tiny pieces of paper um, that's a style of collage that I do a lot and um, I do sell these sometimes I haven't done it in a while but you've seen me do it if you've been following my channel and I like to do the paper painting onto a piece of deli paper because then I can cut out the piece without actually having to sit there and make little teeny tiny pieces fit into little teeny tiny lines and this drawing of course has the difficulty of having straight lines parallel lines small spaces in between the lines so not something that's easy to paper paint so by doing it this way I don't have to be so careful and precise and I can just cut the piece out after it's dry so I'm using my uh, graphite pencil this is the Pentel Graph Gear 1000 my favorite illustration pencil and I I want the bike to be not all the way on the canvas and I don't want a full static side view I want the front wheel to be turned towards you so that you can see kind of a 3d side of the basket so that took me some time <laughs> to figure out um, that the front wheel because it's turned will not appear circular it will appear oval and you'll be able to see both sides of the bar you know just things anyway it was it was not an easy drawing by any means but now that it's done I'm gonna go ahead and start my paper painting I have some aqua teal turquoise type papers these are all just scrap papers that are from various things some of them might be jelly prints some of them might be roll-off paper from when I was jelly printing and I was cleaning my brayer um, some could be pieces of napkins pieces of printed tissue paper um, just stuff little pieces and bits and bobs and I keep all these and then I put them in boxes sorted by color and then I use them for collaging for this style of collaging so that's what I'm using and I'm using some Liquitex matte fluid medium because I'm pretty much gluing lightweight paper to 
lightweight paper. So I'm using the fluid medium and then later on I'll be using the gel medium to glue onto the canvas because the canvas is more porous and needs, you know, more filler. So I do have a couple funny things to say about, about these little pieces of paper because yesterday um, we have some people in town and and we need places for them to sleep because we have graduations and visitors and so I needed to set up the area near my studio as a bedroom so I won't be able to get in there for a few days until the person who's sleeping in there leaves but I needed to clean up the floor I know I've been talking about this in other videos about how I need to clean up my studio there's a lot of paper on the floor and this happens because when I'm doing this sort of a project or when I'm you know basically doing any project I have little scraps and I try to throw them in the trash and they fall into the floor and then I roll my chair over them or my feet get the, on them and I walk around and pretty soon there's little bits of paper everywhere just that's just the nature of what happens when I'm creating art it's just messy and that's all there is to it so I'm crawling around on the floor right trying to pick up all these little pieces of paper because they're too big to vacuum so I need to scoop them up I need to pick them up and um, then I can vacuum after the fact you know the little teeny teeny tiny things left but as I'm doing this crawling around on the floor luckily nobody was watching me I keep finding these beautiful little pieces of paper now you know that these things have been discarded because they're on the floor I didn't save them but I keep finding them <laughs> <laughs> little pieces of packaging or uh, I don't know what um, pieces of envelopes that people have sent me I don't know anyway it was comical it was comedy and tragedy all rolled in one watching me try to pick up the pieces of paper on the floor and I kept saving things and I kept putting them in my basket I, oh it was <laughs> you had to be there I guess and, and I'm sure that many of you who are artists who watch my channel know what I'm talking about that it is so difficult to throw away pretty pieces of paper and pretty things that should just be thrown away but they're pretty and you just want to keep them so I paper painted up some of that um, bike and then I put it aside to dry and now I'm working on the canvas this is a nine I'm by 12 probably is my guess it could be well, I think it's 9 by 12 and my first layer of my mixed media piece is going to be of course collage so I've got more scraps and bits and bobs um, that I'm gonna just make a layer it's just a layer we're not stressing about it I'm, I have colors that I've chosen colors that I want to use of course I want to use these types of greens and things like that that are um, the inspiration board but I've all I also want to bring in some warm color some warm complementary color uh, yeah maybe a yellow or a peach or red orange something that's gonna warm up the piece because if it was just all that mint color it would be boring there would be no no contrast um, between the colors because it's just just all just one color so I I wanted to avoid that and I wanted to warm up the background a little bit I'm my concept is that the bike is outside it's in the spring sunshine and it's gonna go for a ride and so I've got some yellowy there's my yellow sunshine color and I've got a little bit of map and things like that um, they kind of lend the idea that it's travel related that it has something to do with moving or you know getting out outside on the roads and then I'm also using a few pieces like this um, deli doily <laughs> I got it at a deli and it's a doily <laughs> okay I literally saved that from a restaurant and I've just been using it you know I tore it up and I've been using it <laughs> It was a restaurant not a deli yeah I'm, I'm yeah deli paper doily it's all the same thing right I've got some scrapbook paper I've got some uh, gel printed paper I've got some a little piece of napkin 
some tissue paper that has printed words, tissue paper that has printed music. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything, mostly. All, almost all the paper is lightweight. The, a couple of those pieces are pretty heavy, but I am using my matte gel medium to attach it. Then just to unify this layer of the background so that there aren't any any hard edges and there's no color that's standing out and punching you in the face as opposed to the ones that are in the background chilling, you know. <laughs> I'm using some uh, white gesso with my two inch brayer and just applying a sloppy coat and then if there's little pieces that seem to not be stuck down, I'm putting a little bit of gesso under them and smoothing them down. And then I'm taking my finger, and if there's any hard edges or places that don't seem blended, I'm just blending them with the gesso as well. So this is just a unifying layer, and it gives the this kind of a sealant and a base coat for the next layer. So then I'm back to my collage piece, my paper painted piece, and I realized that the, well, I realized as I was paper painting it that the um, wheels and the um, gear, maybe, the thing that's, that you put the chain on to make it go with the pedals, those need to be done separately. So I, I put another piece of deli paper over the other drawing and I traced them out and then I am now, because I know that I'm going to be using dark colored paper now, because the wheels are going to be grays and blacks and, you know, those type of colors, I went ahead and went over those lines with a black illustration pin, a pit pin, so that I would be sure to be able to see them on the other side when I cut them out. So I'm going to end up with the main body piece and then the wheels and gears separate. And um, then I'll put them all together at the end when I'm doing the collaging onto the canvas. So I'm using uh, grays, black. Some of this paper is actually from some packaging that stencils came in. <laughs> it had an interesting pattern on it. It was like, you know, the background of the stencil and so I kept it. Um, I don't have a lot of gray and black paper I discovered. Um, I guess I don't really use those colors a lot as far as printing with the gel plate or anything like that. They're just not colors that I use a lot, so I had a pretty limited supply actually. I might actually have to make some gel printing on black paper, which I keep saying I'm going to do and then never do it. <laughs> I have the black paper, I have the gel plate, but I just never get around to it. So my next step is going to be adding some layers of color using some glazing. So I've got out my um, artist paints from Deco Arts. These are the media line paints and I'm making an, a minty aqua color, a kind of a light blue color and then a warm tone with the quinacridone gold and I'm applying these to the canvas and then using baby wipes to wipe them back and this brings forth the texture that's on the canvas from all the different layers of paper that have been glued on there and then and of course the deli doily <laughs> hashtag deli doily yeah <laughs> so I'm using them just randomly I'm not like really focusing a whole lot um, I do understand that green and orange make brown so I'm trying to maybe not mix green and orange too much um, it'll make a neutral color so it's not the end of the world if I do, but um, I do have that kind of sunny area up in the upper right hand corner. That's where the sun's coming from. And I'm just kind of blending in, putting some around the edges of the canvas because I didn't collage all the way the edges of the canvas. So I'm coloring them in with my glaze as I'm going. And I just put, put some on, wipe it off. Uh, put some on, wipe it off. You know, it's it's a kind of an intuitive process. It's not, there's no rules to glazing, <laughs> I don't think. There might be. I'm not a fine artist, so there might be rules, but um, glazing me medium mixed with 
media fluid paint is what these are. Wipe on, wipe off, wax on, wax off. <laughs> but it does add more color and also bring out texture and also unify the background because this is supposed to be a background, not a foreground. Okay, for my next layer onto my background, I'm going to do some stamping with some archival inks. These are permanent inks, so I don't need to worry about them running or um, washing off if I put some more wet media over the top of this, which I know that I'm going to because I still have to collage my bicycle on and whatever else I decide to add. Starting out with some of the watering can gray around the edges, I'm kind of making a, a vignette by darkening the edges and then um, having the lighter colors in the center. And so I start with the gray and then I move to um, kind of a leaf green with some leaves and then that patina color. Um, then for the flowers I'm using the orange blossom and um, the yellow, I can't remember the, what its name is, and the red. So this adds more texture and pattern to the background, uh, visual texture, not physical texture. These stamps are all just random stamps from Stampin' Up. I used to be a demonstrator for over 10 years, so I have a lot of Stampin' Up stamps, but I will try to find similar ones um, when I do my linking below the video. I'll link all the products that I used. I'll try to find something similar um, because I'm pretty sure these are all discontinued from Stampin' Up. Maybe you could find them on eBay, I don't know. Then I just went around the edges um, just with the pad with the gray to kind of darken up the whole edge. Then I have some white acrylic paint and again the glazing medium and I'm going to do a light glaze wash with uh, white over the top of this. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with glazing today. Um, <laughs> I decided that it was too bright and that the the bike wouldn't show up on it because the colors were too similar to the bike so I just pushed it all back with some white painting it off wiping it off painting painting it on wiping off that whole thing again so now I need to cut out my bicycle tires and gears I'm not going to make you watch that and then um, I did have to cut out the inside of the gear using an exacto knife. I uh, couldn't do it with scissors. And now for assembling it all. Um, I laid it out. I was like trying to get everything in its right position. And I ended up gluing some of the pieces together because I just didn't think I'd be able to put the tire and gears on and, and get it exactly lined up with the frame of the bike. So, yeah, <laughs> I ended up gluing them together, which worked fine. I didn't glue the back tire, but everything else I glued together. But then the one piece that comes down and hooks to the front tire, that's actually separate. I, I kind of accidentally cut it off, so I have it separate, and I'll put it on last. I'm just tacking these together with tacky glue. There's that little, I don't know what that's called, axle maybe, and a front axle. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a mechanical person, so. So then I end up sticking all this on with my um, Liquitex gel matte medium, the thick pasty stuff. Uh, I put it on both the canvas and the pieces because these are thick enough that they're they don't want to stay on as good as a thin piece of paper so make sure that you butter the backs of them and then also put some medium on the canvas as well as you're sticking it down but otherwise it's just gluing on I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing <laughs> so here's that little axle thing um, I struggle with the angle of it uh, 
again perspective the front wheel is turned towards us so what would it look like it wouldn't be straight it would be angled and I end up trimming it a little bit and then adding a little piece on the other side and I also realize that I have to add a piece onto the, the, the where the pedal would hook to the gear uh, it would be one one of the pedals would be on this side of the bike and one pedals would be on the back side of the bike so I ended up having to add a little piece to make it look correct but other than that I think it all turned out pretty well it's not perfect but it's art so there's no you know I don't think any police are gonna come after me for not being perfect then I decide to lighten up just inside of the wheels with that same white glaze that I had left over. Um, I just think it looks better. Kind of makes the bike come more to the foreground, I think, or something. I don't know. Because I wanted to, okay? I wanted to. <laughs> so once that's all dry, I of course immediately decide that there needs to be a ground because I cannot stand it when things are floating and not on the ground. <laughs> it drives me crazy. So I had a few of these scraps. Ironically, they were on the floor. Yes, these scraps of flute paper, corrugated paper, were on the floor. <laughs> but I rescued them yesterday when I was cleaning. <laughs> So I use those for a ground for my bike to sit on. And then, of course, I need to fill in um, some more of this composition. It's There needs to be other stuff. And I was planning on having flowers, of course, because this is kind of a spring canvas. And spring is when the flowers come. So I get out some pieces of green, and I'm tearing them into leaf shapes. And then I realize I need to put all my flowers in the basket and they're going to be tiny so I decide to use this uh, old Stampin' Up! punch and then also this EK Success punch to make flowers and a little bit of greenery for the basket and I just blob on a bunch of gel on there and then <laughs> kind of stick them stick them down layering them on top of each other starting with the greenery and then moving to the flowers <clears throat> until it's all filled up like a basket full of flowers. Using a palette knife. You see me switch off between the palette knife and the brush, my glue brush. Why do you think that is? It's because different weights of paper require different amounts of pressure or different amounts of glue and it's just something that you learn as you work through like right now that little piece of deli paper I can't put that on there with the with the metal thing because it's just making it wrinkle so then I get out the brush and that works a lot better for putting on the deli paper in particular those darker pieces the other pieces I could have done with the palette knife but I already had the brush so I'm just switching off um, dependent on the thickness of the paper, the heaviness of the paper, what surface I'm putting it on. Um, it's just things that you learn, things that you figure out as you're doing collage. Collage is definitely an art form that is unique among art forms. It's different than everything else. And it has a learning curve just like everything. So then I make flowers by cutting out petals and um, have some oranges, pinks, reds, yellows. The same papers that I punched the flowers out from that I put in the basket because I want the composition to be all coordinated in color. And these are my warmer to tones that I'm bringing in to make it look like a fun day on the bike out in the spring. So I end up putting a pink flower, an orange flower, and a yellow flower. I think at some point this cuts out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, the phone rang. I, you know, I film with my phone, my iPhone. And the phone rang and turned off the video. So there is a section missing there, but it was repetitive anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
So then my next step was to start adding some shadows to bring out more detail using my Stabilo All Pencil. This is a highly water reactive pencil that writes on anything. So it's great for writing over the top of all these different layers. But since it's water reactive, you can blend it. So I just draw the lines on around where I want them and then I use my water barrel brush to moisten the medium that I've drawn on there and blend it out. And I'm going to do this around the entire bike, um, the flowers, everything. And then that adds in the shadows that further in makes the background look like it's a background and the foreground look like it's a foreground. Because we do want a focal image and not just a big blob of color. I also use the Stabilo to add some detail to the basket um, because it needs the little basket weave. So I draw some lines in and then blend those using the water and then it starts to look more like a basket. And then I go in and around the flowers to make shadows so that each individual flower can stand out more. <clears throat> and around the outside edges of everything makes a huge difference if you skip this step then your collage is not as advanced and developed as you would want it to be especially when you're focusing on a color and so a lot of the, the color in the, the project is the same I also add some spokes and blend those out with the water as well the water brush. It's a, a brush that has water in the handle and as you squeeze it the water comes out. Then I add shadow around my ground, of course. At first I just put the shadow on the bottom and then later I think, you know, it doesn't look right. So I end up putting it on the top as well. And adding uh, shadowy details to my flowers. Some of you who are into composition of things are looking at this and saying, you know what, there needs to be something in the upper right corner because it doesn't look right. It's not balanced. <laughs> Am I the only one or is other people looking at my canvas and saying that? I do notice it. <laughs> I end up adding another flower in the upper corner. It's going to be a red one this time. Right, it's orangish. <clears throat> and a few more leaves. And then that to me balances the composition. Otherwise it would drive me crazy. Another option would be to put a quote or a title or something like that. If it was a page, if it was an art journal page, I would do that. But um, I'm going to hang this on the wall. So, Or maybe sell it. I don't know. Hang it on the wall for a while and then sell it maybe I'm not sure so then I go ahead and add some white highlights and I'm not I'm using my white Posca pen but I'm not leaving it as a line I am actually blending it with my finger as I go you have a couple sec seconds <laughs> seconds where you can do that so that's what I'm doing. I'm making more blurry lines because I didn't outline my entire project with a Posca pen like I could have as an illustration. I could have outlined everything with a black pen, but instead I used the Stabilo and I blended it. So I want the white to be blendy looking as well. So if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment so I know you were here even if it's just a single word. It's still a comment, it's still an interaction. I want to hear from you guys uh, what you think about this canvas in this process. Um, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. There's a little button down there in the lower right hand corner that you can click on to subscribe. And as you do that, turn on the little bell because um, then you get notifications when I put up a video and you don't miss something or 
uh, YouTube doesn't tell you that there's a new video because that does happen. So to finish up my canvas, I'm taking these little mini brads and cutting off their little wings and then gluing them on. I didn't want to poke them through the canvas, you know, that would like make a hole in the canvas. So I'm gluing them on with some strong glue. And then I'm also going to use some gems and stick them in the centers of all the flowers, self-adhesive gems. Um, they're kind of a burnt orange color that matches the canvas perfectly. I believe someone sent them to me, so thank you. Um, if not, I bought them at probably, I don't know. I don't know where they came from, but they were perfect. <laughs> Forgot to them yet, but <laughs> still sticking on these things. So I put the uh, mini brads on each place where the um, tires would attach and then also on the gear. Then the final thing I'm going to do is add just a tiny bit of Stickles glitter glue. You know how at the end of handlebars there's like sometimes on little kids ones particularly there's those ribbons, strings that they put at the end. Um, I just wanted to make some sparkly ones and I also added a little bit of that sparkle in the center of the larger flowers just to coordinate everything but I just wanted it to have some iridescent strings that are coming out the handlebars so I think that's it for me and your close-ups are coming so thank you very much bye bye